banks operate in a complex world. The need for banks to transform themselves to meet the needs of the digital native are leading to hyper-personalization of solutions and analytics in real time on growing volumes of data. As a result, the need for data storage and processing power is increasing constantly. Yes, infrastructure costs are tumbling down, but there are costs and time factors related to upgrading existing infrastructure time and time again. In addition, there are costs related to the real estate for a data center, the human resources required to run the data center. As we are all aware, banks like to have complete clarity on the costs. While it is easy to establish upfront costs for upgrading infrastructure, the predictability of future costs is very difficult to predict with changing technologies and with changing solutions and with changing infrastructure. More importantly, every time we invest in infrastructure, we are creating a basis for converting that infrastructure into a legacy system a few years down the line. So how do we actually resolve this complexity? So how does cloud computing help banks in this highly competitive and margin-driven environment? It provides cost efficiencies, it enables speed to market, and it enables delivering quality infrastructure. Putting your data center in the cloud actually gives you a huge amount of scalability and the ability to handle peaks and troughs of processing power requirements. More importantly, you no longer have to worry about managing your infrastructure, patches, upgrades, new operating systems, because the cloud provider actually takes care of all of that it leaves the banks the ability to focus on their core competencies, which is providing their customers a superior experience and through that delivering business value. Regulatory compliance is a critical part of any bank's operation. In addition, banks are very focused on security of data as well as cybersecurity. Banks hold a huge amount of sensitive customer data and their credibility depends on how well they manage it and keep it secure. Traditionally, banks have been fairly risk averse in adopting new technologies and rightly so. Increasingly, what is happening in today's world is governments and regulators are focusing a lot on data privacy making sure that data is kept secure. There is access control to ensure that people who are not authorized to access that data don't have access to it. So the adoption of the cloud has always been looked at by banks with a deep degree of suspicion and by the regulators even more so. However, there is a shift to the cloud which is happening slowly quietly, but very shortly. So how are regulators looking at cloud-related regulation? And how is their position evolving over time? The US Federal Financial Institution Examination Council has actually changed its position based on the demand of the banking clients to treating cloud as another form of outsourcing. So they have made it a little easier for banks to adopt the cloud, but they haven't clearly specified a regulation framework. So there is a bit of uncertainty over there. One of the most advanced regulators uh, in the world, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, who were once extremely anti-cloud, have changed their position along the lines of the US Fed and said that the cloud adoption 
by banks will be treated like outsourcing. They've got a framework in their regulation and they are probably the most advanced regulator in this regard. The Financial Conduct Authority in the UK has a similar position as well, but their framework again is not evolved. So over time, we have seen over the last four or five years, the position of the regulators is becoming more cloud friendly and increasingly more and more regulators are creating legislation for cloud adoption in a very cautious way, but surely they are making progress in the right direction. There is a very interesting trend that is happening in banking today. It's about banks becoming open. And this is not just a word. There is regulation being created all around the world to say that no one bank actually owns a customer's data. The CMA in the UK has made it mandatory that product or reference data belonging to a customer can be shared via APIs and probably through the cloud. Similarly, the European Union has a launched regulation uh, called the Payment Services Directive, PSD2 as it is more popularly known, which allows a customer to specify how his or her data can be shared with multiple entities. What actually this is doing is that it is creating an environment where banks no longer have hold on the data. They have to share it with other organizations and the people who are going to take advantage of this are organizations that work in the fintech environment. So the impact of all this, apart from impacts about disintermediation of banks, is also that the technology that will be used underlying all this for transferring the data and sharing the data is probably through the cloud and probably through a public cloud. So factors like social media, mobility, analytics are all driving adoption of the cloud. As the digital natives become more and more demanding, banks need to innovate. The impact of the open banking initiatives is putting a lot of pressure on banks to actually digitally transform themselves, to focus on issues like analytics, hyper-personalization, the speed of the transaction, and all this based on analytical engines, behavioral models, and things that demand high processing power. People are also looking at other industries and seeing the benefits that people have accrued from moving to the cloud related to cost, the movement from capex to operating expenses to looking at the speed of deployment and implementation and most of all that the cloud is actually more secure than anything that an individual bank or organization can offer in terms of security. On the other hand, as more and more banks are going to the cloud and being able to deliver superior customer satisfaction, the competitive pressures to be agile and to add value, improve their margins and their revenue by focusing on their core competency is becoming more and more important. So where are banks? today with respect to cloud. In 2015, Capital One announced that they were moving completely to a cloud environment with Amazon Web Services. Shortly after that, the World Bank indicated that they would be doing similar movement to the cloud. Interestingly, Deutsche Bank analysts have said that 30% of the large banks 
will move their infrastructure to the cloud in the next three years or so. Recently, 12 Mexican banks have actually moved to the cloud for their core banking systems. And they have adopted the core banking systems from a company called Temenos, and all 12 of them have moved to the cloud. So we have moved a long way from the early days of cloud adoption when salesforce.com actually launched a CRM solution in the cloud, shortly followed by Oracle Siebel on demand. So people are moving in the right direction, but most banks are still quite cautious and are adopting business applications that are not directly customer facing applications. So enterprise applications like uh, HR applications, business applications, technology uh, solutions. So for example, backup of data in the data center, moving the data center itself, uh, looking at disaster recovery, all these things are relatively neutral uh, applications. So people are comfortable getting familiar with the cloud using these without any issue with regulators. One of the key applications that people are using the cloud for is analytics. And that in itself is worth the price of adopting the cloud. Cloud providers have also started some very innovative engagements in the world of fintech. They realized that fintech is the future of the financial industry. And so they have set up accelerators to allow the development of fintech companies. Moreover, they are serving as an interface between the fintech and the enterprise organizations and banks. So they have positioned themselves in a way that they are getting the business from the emerging powers in the fintech world, as well as the existing banks. An important question to answer is, can all the questions about cloud security, regulation, compliance be answered by the creation of a vertical cloud? Now, what is a vertical cloud? It is essentially a cloud focusing entirely on the banking community. This idea was first mooted in 2013 by a subsidiary of the RBI, which is the Reserve Bank of India. And they called it the Indian Banking Community Cloud. Now, this cloud, interestingly, has been implemented and is being used by a lot of small banks in India. At the same time, or maybe just slightly later, Aliyun, which is the cloud belonging to Alibaba, actually launched in China a vertical banking cloud, which included not just the data center services and the infrastructure, but also applications that ran on the cloud. Now, it was an excellent implementation and it has been used in various parts of China but there are geopolitical issues about its use in other parts of the world. So what are banks going to do and what are cloud providers going to do to bring both communities together? So smart cloud providers are actually creating competency centers for the cloud. Basically, they are certifying technology and consulting partners to actually enable easy implementation and support of banking solutions on the cloud. And essentially moving towards a vertical cloud. So I think it is an amazing development and I think that this will get augmented by more work that banks are doing and cloud providers are doing of creating application solutions to go on the cloud. So there are already core banking systems that are running. There are process management systems, capital market systems. Uh, there are mobile banking uh, facilities available on the cloud, risk management, and of course, data management and analytics. So 
there is a strong merit for the case of a vertical cloud for banking. But will it work? Will it succeed? Only time will tell.